job. I mean, I'm ready. Hi, everyone. My name is Eugene Kane, and I like these working people. I'm retired. <laughs> I'm 76 years old. I spent 50 years in education. I'm a charter school advocate, and I'm going to tell you why. My school, El Shabazz Public School Academy in Lansing, made AYP 10 consecutive years, okay, was identified as a school that was beating the odds because we had a 99% minority and poor population. I have received all kinds of accolades from the U.S. government, to local government, to state government. As a matter of fact, I'm from Lansing, Michigan. I'm a former school superintendent and a former assistant state school superintendent. <coughs> I'm also a former vice president of the Edison Project, Southeast Region. My territory was from South Carolina over to Louisiana. So I know what's going on in education. I know about the miseducation of us. I knew, I knew the answer to every question that the presenters made today. The only one that confused me was that sermon. I had never seen that photo of him. I've seen the older ones. I've never seen that. What I'm trying to say is that we can do this. We can educate our own kids. Now, how is it that we did it at a school that was named in honor of Malcolm X, who grew up down the street in Lansing, Michigan? Easy. First thing you got to do with black kids, you got to convince them that it's in their best interest to get an education. You got to excel, you got to accelerate them. All of our kids took the SAT. Not at seventh grade. No, we didn't take the PSAT. Our kids took the SAT at fifth grade. You know why? I stumbled into this. I was in a white community. And someone told me, Dr. Kane, I had student teachers at the time. I was a professor at Wayne State University. I said, well, we are practicing for the SAT. Now, this was a rich community, Gross Point, Michigan. I stumbled and I said, oh, I didn't know you could take the test that early. So I got to pay the money. And then two of the kids, if you take it consecutive years until you graduate, you give them your best score. And I did that with my own boys. I have four sons. We have four sons. The lady who portrayed Harriet Tubman is my wife. The other Dr. King. Here are our four sons. All took the test early. We believe in acceleration. One is a college professor in Georgia, Kennesaw State, instructional technology. One is a medical doctor, just got his residency, Michigan State University. One probably danced to his music. How many of you heard? Bruno Mars, Just the Way You Are. How many of you heard Reed? Well, that's my son, the producer, who took the test in fourth grade. You gotta accelerate kids, and you cannot, by changing the school, you gotta upset them, you said it first. You gotta turn it upside down. Mm -hmm. My kids went to school at Siobhan's Academy from eight o'clock to seven o'clock. You got to keep the parents, and you got to take the excuses away from parents. Those who said, Dr. K, we don't have a car to come to a PTA meeting. Well, hell, we sent the bus. <laughs> Pick your butt up. Well, well, you know, I'm at home cooking. Oh, we took that excuse away. We fed our kids three meals a day and a snack with Title I money, and we did not get any extra money. We got the same for people allowance that the regular schools got. We didn't get no extra money. 
So it's, good. it's the how creatively you use that. I want money. Your special ed money. The other thing about special ed, we got our kids. If you came to our school and said that you went, they said you went special ed. We got you out of special ed within a year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Excellent, excellent panel. Um, we're going to open it up now to uh, questions, and and we really want the young people to raise their hand, okay, and, and ask some questions of your elders. Yes, ma'am. I don't have a question. I have a comment. Okay. As a high school teacher, that is a failing school. I would like to challenge superintendents to pick your teachers better. <laughs> Some of uh, the people that we have in our schools have no business talking to anybody. Um, parents are not doing what they need to do at home. Right. We are having to do extra work with our children. But if you truly love children, it's not work. If you truly know children, children don't do what you say. They do what you do. Right. If the example is wrong, nine times out of ten, they're going to follow that wrong example. I went back to college at 39. I've been teaching school 26 years. I'm on my way out of the door. But what I see in education truly bothers me. Because in 2020, we are doing less with our children than they did with me in 1965. It makes no sense what we're doing in education. That's why I say one of the reasons I bring my students to this summit, and I think I've been coming to seven, maybe eight years, is because that man leave them alone. Dr. Brockler did a presentation on a dollar bill. My children don't know about this presentation until they graduate. I teach seniors. I realized at that point that our babies need to hear something other than what they hear yeah. in the schools. Yeah. If I could have, I would have brought all the stuff out with me. I only brought 24 because that's all I could get here yeah. on the bus. Okay. We have got to do something with education. I never did education because I thought educators were educated. They're not. Thank you. Too many of us are not doing our job as teachers. These babies are my babies. I say to their mothers, I will not do anything to your child that I will not do to my own. And most of them say to me, amen, and do just that. Yeah. because I have the privilege of doing that, um, <laughs> that we need more teachers like you. You know, I, I just know. <laughs> you know, I'm like, right. you know, I'm with, I think, listen, I've been educated for 42 years, okay? 42 years. Came straight out of Stanford University and went to a, a large high school in Southern Valley and worked there for the next 35 years. I'm telling you, if these superintendents could pick their staff, they believe me. They went picked us. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor back there, raise your hand. Mr. Taylor ran the Dr. Martin Luther King Academic Middle School in San Francisco Unified School District for 17 years. He was a, a remarkable principal. But he used to always say, I could have even done better if I could have picked my teachers. Oh, wow. But see, too often their hands are tied. And they have to get, right, Mr. Taylor, who they're given. But um, I, I do, so, but we do need more teachers. So we need more teachers like you, but like the superintendent said right here, who wants to go on a teaching nowadays? I mean, these kids, unfortunately, have been raised to be so freaking disrespectful. I listen, what one of them left us in the next week? If kids talk to their parents the way parents of other kids talk to them and the way they talk to teachers, very disrespectful. But this brother down on the end, and Lansing, and I'm talking to him, he actually has done it. That's what I love about how he ended it. They talked about what they love to do and what you have done, but this brother has a whole school that shows it can be done. And you know what I tell people about charter schools and my national organization? 
I'm not against charter schools. I'm against bad schools. Yeah. So they can be independent, they can be private, they can be chartered, they can be public. I'm against bad schools. So we have a lot of good schools that are chartered, and we have a lot of bad schools that are chartered. That's right. We have a lot of good schools that are public, and a lot of bad schools. So for me, no, no black child should ever be educated in a bad school, period. Die. We have a student with a hand up over here. Okay. And then the man will um, So I have a question for you, Olivia. You talked about how your schools, you started having your students in PSAT at a very young age. Um, but I, don't, I would just like to ask, but why do you think that's such a good idea? Because I don't think education should be about test prep. I think education should be about educating your students. You're just teaching them how to pass a test. You're not teaching them actual education, actual history, actual math. You're teaching them how they're supposed to pass this test. And I can get to myself. It's the only reason I got to tell my good scores because I know the formula. I know how to answer the questions. So I don't know if that's the best policy on teaching your students. So her question really is, how do you feel about test prep? Thank you. That's a, that's one of our students from California. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Uh, you can do both. You can do both. Test prep is the reality of knowing what those kids are going to face when they leave your school district. That's the reality. They're going to be faced with getting into college, getting into armed services, or wherever they're going. And that's based on test preparation. That's the reality. You can't escape it. But you also have the responsibility to see to it that within your curriculum, and so-called African-centered curriculum, that the epicenter of everything you do has a relationship to Africa. Now, one thing, I was able to recruit my own staff. I want, uh, the lady isn't here, but don't get hung up about the color or race of your teachers. Don't go there. Don't assume that just because their teacher is black, they're going to do a good job. Right. That's right. Don't, uh, yeah. That's right. Don't right. You know, because some of these sorry as black folk, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't want them to teach my kids. You know, by the way, I, I only made me three sons. The fourth son is the sister to the city manager's grand rat. So that, but the, I had the responsibility of hiring a good staff. And fortunately for me, I had a good set. That's, but that's charter school, though. I'd like to say one thing in defense of public education. Now, I'm just going to speak the truth. And charter schools, great. Success, you had great. My question to anyone who says charter school, is this, what about students that are not in that charter school? Yes, thank you. What about thank all of you. Thank you. I want every You're child welcome. in Alabama to have the opportunity across the country to have the same education as that child in charge. That's right. That's that right. That's 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 right. What the hand we've dealt in public education, the stipulation we've given right. as far as selection, the process, man, we're getting rid of a bad teacher. Yeah. The process of getting rid of a bad teacher. <coughs> education, we go through that. Yeah. But litmus test for me, and this is my first year to attend, what's best for our children? Yes. Yeah. And that's what I stand for, and that's what I fight for. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. Okay, so we got, we got all this. Um, this young lady here, right? This nice young lady here. <laughs> and then, Abby. Thanks for the compliment, this 85 year old young lady. <laughs> yes. Young lady has a few things to say. Hi, everybody. Me again. And I'm listening to what you're saying about, about, uh, about uh, teachers who don't have their acts together. I'm here from New York. Brought up here in the South, Tuskegee University educated and went to, and, 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 and went to school. Uh, but I've been living in New York for a very long time, recently retired, and I, uh, I was in the school system, and I'm so tired 
of being around teaching the librarian. Uh, so tired of being around teachers for God's sakes who can't even speak the language grammatically. I'm very much with the person who said, principals, superintendents do a better job of selecting teachers. I got so tired of sitting on my mouth as I listened to my colleagues murdering the Queen's English. How the hell are you going to teach any kid how to speak properly? And these were kids coming from defined neighborhoods. How are they going to learn how to speak the language properly when the teachers can't do it? They're speaking miserably, teaching miserably. The grammar is lousy. I'm wondering how the devil the kids are going to learn when the teachers don't know. And I don't give a rip what complexion the person is that's teaching. Teach it black, teach it fair, teach them honestly, teach them where they have come from. It's vital, it's important. But for God's sake, speak to them grammatically. Okay. So let those All right, teachers matter. Teacher, yes. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Do not get me started about I correct grammar at Macy's. Okay. Um, so, um, so Abby had her hand up and then Atlantis and then we'll come back over here to Nevaeh. Uh, uh, and then we're really trying to hear the young people's voices. Okay, we're really trying to hear. They've had a lot of the older people. But let's go ahead, Abby. So two comments. Um, one to just go back to what you said earlier.